let's go ahead with our time here. We've been leading ourselves into a place of prayer just to not study through um, the book of Daniel. We've been looking at uh, verse 14 to 16 in what we're trying to coin uh, surprise by faith. And the whole idea is uh, just looking at what faith does, right? One thing is we've talked about faith, we've talked about grace. We've talked about the fact that Faith is our responsibility. Grace is God's responsibility. In grace is favor, right? Also, mercy is God's responsibility, right? It's God's prerogative to give us mercy or grace. It's our prerogative when it comes to faith. We, without our faith, we cannot receive grace, right? Mercy is God's prerogative, right? He gives us mercy on, on his own out of its sovereignty, out of its fullness. Uh, faith is what connects us to the grace that God has for us, the favor that God has for us. And that's why we spend a, 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 time, a lot of time talking about faith, just get a good understanding, a good grip on, on faith. Uh, Pastor Shaggy, you're welcome, sir. Uh, uh, so today we're just trying to, I mean, in this series, we, this has been the third part of the is we're just trying to emphasize the fact that of our place, what we need to do, God is disposed towards us, is favorably, favorably disposed towards us, but that is not enough. That does not on its own work out the miracle that we need in our life. God expects us to be a participant in the process. And all we're trying to discuss is just understand God's expectation in our life. Right, God has released the fullness of Himself to us, but that fullness will not get to us if we don't do our part. God has done His part, the next move is ours. That next move is what we are hoping to bring to forth to ourselves, you know, even as we, we, we talk about that, just encourage ourselves and see from Scripture what that next move is, what is it that comes from us that guarantees the miracle that we desire of God. Let's okay, thanks for praying. Just to continue what we're talking about, you know, again, we're talking about surprise by faith. The surprise that you get when you act on the faith that you have, you know. And let's start with, you know, God. In Joshua chapter 1, you'll find that God about nine times told Joshua, the key to the success, to his success. Only one thing God did God tell Joshua in, 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 in Joshua chapter one as to the key to his success. Yes, he talked about the fact that you should not let the word of the Lord depart from him. That was a foundation. The word of the Lord will give him faith. But faith is useless if that faith is not used. Faith that is not used, faith that does not have works, is dead, right? For faith to work, you need courage. It's not what you believe, it's what you do about what you believe that provokes the blessing of the Lord. It's what you do about what you believe that causes grace or favor to work on your behalf. Just because you believe means nothing. The devil believes, right? is what you do about what you believe that causes the miracle to occur. And God knew that. So in Joshua chapter one, God repeated about nine times to Joshua, only be thou courageous, only be thou courageous, only be thou courageous, only be thou courageous. If God is repeating that about nine times within about maybe 10 verses of scripture, I, I want to say that that is important. God is not one to waste words. He says, only be that courageous. <laughs> the only way you're going to have the miracle work for you, the only way I will be with you as I was with Moses, the only way you will work in Moses' stead and exceed him is if you are courageous. Or only if you are courageous. You need courage. And that's the whole idea of what we're talking about in, in, this, in this verse of scripture in Daniel. In this series, you need courage. You cannot be passive 
and expect God to work on your behalf. You have to do something about what you believe. And that's something you do is what you can do. God does not expect you to do what you cannot do. But he expects you to do what you can do. Because what you can do, that you do, is the show of your faith. If you don't do what you can do, then you don't have faith. You have been, you have been, you have been, you have been succumbed. You have been overcome by fear. Fear is not doing anything. Fear is being passive. Fear is just sleeping and just, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, my life is dead. Uh, I've been overcome. That is not faith. That's fear. Faith is always asking, what is my portion to do? What can I do? What's within my realm that I can do? That is what faith does. Faith is action. Faith is not passive. Faith is not in action. Faith is doing what I can do. Right? So we see that God repeating to, to, to Joshua, only be that courageous. If God is telling Joshua to be courageous, that means that he would have circumstances in his life whereby it, 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 will, it will be something that will negate or fight against his being courageous. God will not tell you to do something if there will not be an occasion for you to do it. It means that he would have occasion and he had occasion in his life where fear wanted to overcome him, where he wanted to give up, where everything in his natural was darkness, where it was as if God was not there. God was not with him. God was not walking on his side. God knew those occasions and those times will come. And the only thing that made a difference for him to allow God's power to come on his behalf is because he stood up in faith. He was courageous. Don't forget, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is acting irrespective of fear. Courage is standing in the face of fear. Courage is doing the opposite of what fear would want you to do, right? 